Hello and welcome to Ivy Church Online. This is the church that meets in your home or car or hospital bed or maybe you're on holiday and we are joining you on holiday today. Hello, thank you so much for being a part of this family online as we meet together. Today is the first day that Ivy are experimenting with something new called Pop-Up Church. And that means that we are meeting in our two locations, which is in the Didsbury building and also in the Tudor Hume building. And we're doing two services. And so that means that people can come and have a personal service. We've loved being able to do watch parties where we've watched this online service together, but now we're able to actually meet in person and have our own service where, where we are. And so if you would like to join that, if you feel like actually you maybe you didn't know or you're now hearing about it and thinking, yes, I could actually go, I could meet with other people in person, then you're so welcome to join us and to sign up before the service. So it's every Sunday from 9.30 is the first service and then 11 is the second service. And so you just sign up to which slot you'd like, either at Didsbury or at Cheadle Hume. And so please do go on the website to find out more about that and to sign up for Pop-Up Church. We also have everything that you need to know about the life of Ivy on the website, so please do go on there as guidelines change and regulations change and stuff like that. Just check out the website, ivychurch.org, to join us. If meeting in person is not, you're not able to do that right now, or maybe you've joined us from a different country or just from further away, and we know that a lot of people have, we are still going to continue online because we have loved the community that this has provided and that this has built with us. So you are so welcome to keep joining us every Sunday online here with us. And I have something very exciting to share this morning as some uh, news from the life of the church here at Ivy because we have appointed our new Ivy Children's and Family Worker. We've had before the incredible Katie Herrera, and you might have seen her video as she chose to uh, leave Ivy and felt God really calling her through the Jonah series to go and see what God had next for her. And so now we are ready to share with you who we have appointed as the new children and uh, kids worker. And so you might, wherever you are, want to just... Do a little pat on your knees or a little drum roll if you've got the kids. Tell them they're allowed to make noise for a moment while we are about to tell you who it's going to be. And so we have Holly Heap. Holly is an incredible woman. We've known her for many years and she has been coming for many years to the Ivy Central service in the evening because in the morning she was leading the kids work at her church. But then from the start of lockdown one, Holly and her family were able to join Ivy Church as we went online. Holly is married to Ryan. She is mum to Henna and Hope, who are part of our Ivy youth, so many of you will know them. She has built and led Kingdom Kids. She's been a youth worker as well as she has been working as the head of pastoral care for a year group in a large secondary school. But now she is coming to be a part of our team here at Ivy. Holly is so full of Jesus. She really is. She hears from him. She's very prophetic. She's so spirit-filled. And she has a passion to see our children and families filled with the love of Jesus and the Holy Spirit and to walk closely with him every day. And so we are so excited to have her on team working with Chris and uh, Gemma and Luke. And so, Holly, we welcome you. Welcome to the family of Ivy Church and welcome to us as a staff team. And so maybe if you are watching on ivychurch.org, you want to just write on the chat there if you're on Facebook, just say a little hello and welcome to Holly and her family. And let's just be really loving in the way that we welcome them into this church. And we are going to worship here in a moment. Today we're going to hear a testimony from somebody. Then we're going to hear from Anthony as he starts our new series. And we have some time then to reflect wherever you are on some questions about what he has been sharing at the start of this series of Bless. And I'd like to remind all of us that we can give at any point throughout the service. Um, To do that, just go on to ivychurch.org slash give. And you can do that at any point in the service, but also in the week. We also have the Ivy online team who are here to pray with you at any point through the service. So you can please just click on that button if you would love someone to just pray with you. You don't even have to tell them everything of what it is that you want prayer for. You could just say, hey, could you pray with me? And that's a beautiful way of us feeling more connected as we watch the service together and feeling like we are together in this. 
So let's worship now and I'm just going to pray for us as we go into a time of worship. Father God, I thank you for each person. Lord, you know exactly where it is that we are sitting or standing or driving as we watch and listen to this service right now. Lord, you know our coming and our going, our lying down and our standing, our sitting and our to and froing. You know everything about us. You know every hair on our head. You know everything that has brought us to this point today and you love us completely. And so, Lord, I pray that as we step into this time of worship now, that this would not be about what I can get from worship, but it would be about being able to bring you all of our praise and adoration, to say that we love you, Jesus, and we want to pour out everything that we have to thank you for who you are today. In Jesus' name, amen. That silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Oh, they cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God.
So I wanted to share with you a story about Lucy. Um, well, Lucy's not her real name. She's a student I work with in a secondary school and Lucy is um, quite high need. She's got a lot of medical issues and also mental health concerns as well. And Lucy um, was one of my people on the Discipleship Pathway course that I committed to pray for. And it, um, one day at work, I was having a meeting with Lucy and she was sharing about how low she felt and just really down and everything was just going to be the same forever. And she just felt very, very low. Uh, but in the middle of this conversation, she said, he even prayed once. I got that desperate. And I was like, oh, that's that's interesting, Lucy, because I pray. I'm a Christian and I pray and, and God answers prayers. I said, what did you ask him for? She said, oh, I don't really know what I asked him for. I just prayed. So I said, right, OK, well, why don't you pray again? Why don't you talk to Jesus and why don't you be specific about what it is that you want him to do? I said, because I worship a God who is miraculous. So you can ask for anything when you're a Christian. So she said, OK, she would pray again. I think she was just so desperate. Anyway, she went and that week at the, on the course, I shared with everybody about Lucy and we prayed for her. And then the next day, so that was a Thursday night, the next day I went into school and Lucy was um, in the first aid room and I popped in and I said, hi Lucy, how are you doing? She said, oh, I'm good today. I'm having a good day. So that's brilliant. And she said, oh, and this really weird thing happened last night. And I was like, oh, and immediately I was like, what was the weird thing? And um, anyway, so she said she'd felt really low. So she'd gone home and put a Disney film on, which, you know, I would do when I'm feeling low because they do kind of lift you a little bit. She put this Disney film on. She said, it wasn't even really that funny, but... Well, she said, I started laughing and I laughed and laughed and laughed. She said, I must have been laughing for over an hour. She was rolling on the floor. She had my sides are hurting. I was just laughing my head off. And I sat there and looked at her and I thought, oh, Lord, you are so faithful. She had so experienced the joy of the Lord in the middle of all this rubbish that she lives with every day. And I just sat there smiling and I said, Lucy, we prayed for you last night on our course. And that's the power of prayer. I said, so keep on praying and keep on asking because God's amazing. And even in the middle of your rubbish, he's with you. So keep on praying. And she was just like a bit like, yeah, OK, thanks, miss. See you. Bye. Walked out the room and shut the door. But I just walked around that day going, Lord, you are so amazing. Why don't we pray more? Because that's the power of God in people's lives.
Some years ago now, my father-in-law was in a meeting at a church and this guy comes up to him and says, are you Anthony Delaney's father-in-law? And Alan was a bit kind of worried, scared even to say the wrong thing because he was a scary looking bloke and he didn't want to get me in any trouble. But he eventually says, yes, I am. I remember the guy actually when he said his name because he was a boxer and I found him a bit scary. He was, he was my neighbour, he lived over the road uh, and he was pretty unforgettable. Um, but he said to Alan, can you say hi from me when you see him? Because I used to live opposite him years ago and I wasn't a Christian then, but now I am. And I go to this church and Alan says, phew, yeah, of course, I'll, I'll tell him. And then he said, um, and can you tell him, I'll never forget what he said that day. And that's what helped me to come to Jesus. And the problem with that is I can't remember the incident or what I said. And I, you know, I, I can't. I could tell you that, I could tell a few other ways that I've been able to share my faith in some way with other people. And I've always wanted to do that, you know, since day one. When Jesus met me as a young PC, as a police officer, he turned my life around uh, from, from where I was into to what he wanted it to be. And it was such good news that that meeting with Jesus, the first person I saw was the first person I told. When I finally got to the police station, I said to the sergeant after this amazing time when I just met with Jesus and he ripped me to bits and put me back together again. And I came in and I said, Sarge, I'm a Christian. And he said, well, you're not a very good one because you're late for work. And I was late for work because of the meeting that I'd had with God. And the problem is, after we start, and we, sometimes we can get a, a, some good results, if you like, of talking to people about Jesus, but if we don't always get back a lot of great results from people, we can kind of end up like, as J. John says, um, Arctic rivers. He says many Christians are like Arctic rivers, frozen at the mouth. And um, I remember as I became a Christian and then going on in the church, I was told that I should share my faith, but I kind of felt guilty because nobody ever told me how and when I did ever go I'd often feel a bit rubbish at it but you know that's like today if you just set off most of us and try to run a marathon 90 of us you'd just get injured and after the pain you might think well I'm obviously not just cut out for that some people they must be like naturals but not me well I have run a few marathons and what I found out by that is you realize you, you don't just need to run to do that, you need to become a runner. You need a plan and a pattern. And you start out with something easy and you do it regularly and eventually it becomes part of your life. It's not something you do, it's part of who you are to in some way share the best thing that ever happened to you with other people. That's why I was delighted when my friend Dave Ferguson wrote some materials about the bless pattern of how not to just do evangelism to people but naturally share my life with them. And you know, that's what the Apostle Paul said he did, by the way. He wrote to the church in Thessalonica and he told them when he first went there and he got the church founded, he said he loved the people and he said he loved them so much he was glad to share not only God's good news, but also our very lives with you because we cared for you so much. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. Paul's caring led to sharing and these blessed practices mean we don't just share the good news or a message, we are the good news to people that God cares for and he wants us to love too. These aren't just a one-off deal every now and then that you go on a mission somewhere or do evangelism. You probably do these things already, but when we get intentional about them, you're gonna to start to see God get more and more involved in your life, but also in the lives of your family and friends and co-workers, your neighbors, whoever you share your life with. The word bless really, it should be pless because it starts with P about being prayer and I know it's annoying, I didn't write the book, but the B actually is for begin with prayer. But then if they'd left it as that, as I say, it would be P, it would be pless, which doesn't make any sense. I got a message just today from a young guy who was a celibate Buddhist monk for some years. While searching for enlightenment, finally he realised Jesus really is the light of the world and started to follow him. And I've got to know this guy and he, I've seen his whole life change. Now he's married, doing some training and he plans to start a church himself with his wife sometime. And he's very out there sharing verbally and on Facebook, brilliant thoughts and posts really boldly. But the message on Facebook messengers just came in and he said, how do you bring people to Christ? He said, I seem to get opportunities to talk about Jesus with people, but no matter how much I learn, I, can't, I don't think my arguments are very persuasive. He says, I, I don't feel I can win them over with words. I've got no miracles to show them. He said, it makes me feel useless, even a bit ashamed. I feel like I should be helping others, but I don't know how. And then he said to me, do you have any thoughts on this? 
And we went backward and forward on that message. Uh, guess where, it all, where I started though? I said, begin with prayer. I said, mate, well done. And just believe you are sowing the seed, but there's different kinds of ground, different seasons in people's lives, but the seeds are going in and they are good. The Bible says we sow our seed, but God brings the increase. And it might take a long time, but people do see the difference. I told him, Jesus has made a difference in you and they're gonna be intrigued by that. And so keep sowing the seed. The only difference you do is water the seed. How? Pray for them. And you know, you don't just water it once and leave it, do you? Pray and pray and pray that the Holy Spirit goes to work and continues to work in them. Have a list, pray for them every day. This church, our church, was founded by a man called Oliver Brockbank, who just reached out to one man that he knew and shared the good news of Jesus with him. Then the two of them started to pray for a few more. 1893 this was, young Oliver just heard the gospel at Cambridge University, he was visited by a speaker called D.L. Moody. He was then a very famous evangelist. Actually presented the gospel to millions. He came from a very poor background himself. D.L. Moody really had very, he was quite illiterate. He had no theological background. People said he wasn't that great a speaker. He had a funny kind of squeaky voice and he talked too fast, but he prayed. D.L. Moody prayed daily for 100 of his friends to come to know Jesus and during his life 96 of those friends said yes to Jesus and the final four gave their lives to him at his funeral. Now I absolutely believe in the power of prayer. There are so many people I care about, I want them to come to know Christ and I know what a huge difference it would make now and forever but now I'm going to be honest and say I find it way too hard to find the time, the dedication, to build a regular pattern of prayer for 100 of my friends. Maybe 10 would be a stretch, but what I can do is map out who is my neighbour, and maybe, as the book says, you, you could write down five names, people I'm praying for every day. That's what it suggests in the blessed book. Five people that you keep on praying for. And I'm, you know what I'm praying? I, I'm praying I can bless them. One of the names on my list is a guy who lives directly opposite and he sits outside in his car most days because he's not allowed to smoke in the flats there. I've had a few chats with him and just BL listened, just listened. He's told me a lot about his life, how he was a soldier for many years, now he drives a truck. He opened up about when his wife died just a few years ago and he's big into football. He just sits there listening to it on the radio, but I'm listening to him because you know, that's the one, another part of this. Begin with prayer, next is listen to people. But you start with prayer and I'm praying for him. Rather than just jumping in and asking him questions and telling him this, the message, I want to listen to him and get to know him. I was out with my friend Nick, Nick Duffy the other day, who just leads the people to Jesus all the time and his wife Becky does it too. She, and how, said, how does she do it? She, said, she just offers to pray for people, for healing. I said to Nick, how do you share? And he said, I just say to people, I like to pray and ask, is there anything I can pray for you? And of course, if they tell you, it can go on the prayer list. But if you can pray right there and then out loud, it blows people away because they didn't expect it then and there. They think you've got to go off to a church and bow down and light a candle and you know, do something formal. They expect it to be religious, but when you naturally talk with God like he's your dad and Jesus like he's your friend and because you know he's there and you know he's real and good and kind and powerful, people are like, oh man, I could pray like that. I could talk with God too. So you can pray with people. But if right now that scares you a little bit, every one of us can pray for some people to come to know Jesus. Whether they know it or not, they can't stop you. There's nothing you can do to stop somebody. Even if you feel like they're the person who's too far gone, there's nobody so far that God can't reach out in love and bring them home. So often when I pray, I just focus a little bit on what I want. And I may or may not see those kind of prayers answer. But I know when I pray for other people to come to know Jesus, I'm praying about what he wants because he cares for that person and he loves them and he sent his son to save them. And again, you might think, well, if that's what God wants, why do I have to bother praying? But you know, nowhere in the Bible does God tell us to pray for things that are going to happen automatically. He never tells us to ask for the sun to shine or for air to breathe or for to gravity to keep you where you are already but he does say we must pray for his kingdom to become and his will to be done on the earth and he says you have not because you ask not how many times has that happened how many times have we missed out because we didn't ask God wants us to be his co-laborers isn't that an amazing thought 
me and you, mere messed up mortals. But his plan is we partner with him in prayer. Everybody you know is looking for peace and purpose and meaning in life that can only be found one way through the one who is the way and the truth and the life. And God has already said here in his word, he wants people to be saved. You might remember now somebody that you used to pray for, but it seemed a lost cause. Maybe you lost hope. Maybe you just got busy and distracted. You haven't prayed for them for a long time. Listen, God has not forgotten them. In the Amplified Version of 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, it says, The Lord does not delay as though he were unable to act. And he's not slow about his promise, as some count slowness. It's extraordinarily patient towards you, not wishing for anyone to perish, but for all to come to repentance. Now, does that include the people on my list? Yes. He wants them to see how much he loves them, that Jesus died for them to rescue them, to pay the price for all our sins on the cross. He doesn't want them to perish. He loved the world so much he sent his only son so they could be saved by him and for him forever. That salvation includes, it means so much more than just a, a ticket to heaven that somebody else paid for. It, it means hope, wholeness and peace that the world cannot give and all the things that people have been craving for, searching for, that, that you're looking in all the wrong places for at times. But it's only found in the person and the love of Jesus Christ and the, the purposes of the Father and the power of the Holy Spirit. He wants people to encounter him, to meet with him here on the earth and to meet with him. And in Hebrew, that word for that meeting or connection is paga. When Adam and Eve used to walk with God in the Garden of Eden before they sinned and spoiled it all, when the meeting that they walked together was paga. God met Abraham and made promises to him. That was paga. He met Moses and instructed him. Paga. He met Mary, put his very life inside of her so she would bear the Son of God. Paga. Jesus connected with sick people, diseased, demon-possessed people, and pow, paga, they were healed. Everything changes when somebody meets God. And do you know what that word most often is translated as? Intercession. The kind of prayer when somebody steps in and meets with God and prays for them. God wants to meet with people. He looks at a crowd, but he doesn't see a crowd. He sees lost sheep without a shepherd. Somebody's hurting and alone. Somebody's lost in the dark, wondering what to do. To the outside world, they may look very successful, like they've got it all together. It could even be somebody's watching and listening right now. And you know that you, you don't... It, the, the truth is that you can't keep it all together. You need the Lord. The Bible says only the Lord is powerful enough to hold it all together. He sustains the whole universe. Everybody needs to know the Lord. and We'd love to pray for you. Maybe you think you're just watching this by accident, but if you join the dots in your life, you'll see God has been pulling it all together. He can, he can even use all those things that went wrong. He didn't cause those hurts, but he can use them if they'll soften your heart and help you see how much he loves you now, how much you need him. So I urge you, if you don't know that saving love of Jesus, just ask him for it now. Tell him about what you've done. Admit it and confess it so he can forgive it and set you free in Jesus' name. And let us know that you're doing that right now because God's in the salvation business. He wants heaven full and we want to celebrate with you. You know, if, if you've ever seen this, you'll never forget it. But in the 1980s, there was a TV show. They called it That's Life. And as part of the surprise, they, they, they got an old man sitting in the studio. His name was um, Nicholas Winton. He's just there with all these other people. He wasn't famous. He was a Christian. One day his wife found a scrapbook in the attic that he'd never talked about, but it dated from just before World War II. And she found photographs and lists and names of 669 children, mostly Jewish, rescued, he'd rescued and arranged to be transported from safety to Britain. Their parents, most of them died in Auschwitz. And the camera just hones in on this lovely old guy's humble face because he's got no idea why he's there. But then they read a name out and they show a picture of a little girl called Vera Gissing. And she sat, there, this middle-aged lady, and they tell her, you're actually sitting next to Nicholas Wilton. And then she turns and she kisses him on the cheek and just says, thank you. And he wipes away the tears. And then the lady on the other side shows the ticket from the train that she was on all those years ago. And she says, me too. And she hugs him and kisses him. And then they say, is there anybody else here? And you're only here because your names are in that book because of Nicholas Winton. And all of a sudden there's a crowd of people, all the people sitting around him stand up and for the first time they realise and he realises it's him. 
it just makes me, I can't watch it, it makes me cry every single time. And who knows, but I've got a suspicion, it's just an inkling, that for all of us, here's what could happen one day. A day that lasts forever because there'll no longer be any night or sun or moon because the Lord himself will be our everlasting light. When, if we've put our trust in Jesus, we'll see the Saviour face to face. We're going to enjoy his love and our inheritance and the reward of our faith, the best of everything, forever. And you wipe away all tears from our eyes and we'll, there'll be no more separation, no more death because of sin, because it's all been dealt with. And I just imagine walking around, I'll be awestruck, amazed by grace, with the ultimate imposter syndrome, thinking, how on earth did I get in here? Because I could never make the grade. But the Bible says there's a book. There's a book there called the Lamb's Book of Life or the Book of Life. And I know my name's only in there because of Jesus. And he says it will never be blotted out because my sins have been blotted out instead. And we won't just have all the time in the world. We'll have all eternity to wonder at his love and his kindness and his mercy and his wisdom. And all these things we didn't understand, we'll understand. And what if... When we ask how it was that he found me and why he loved me and, and why he met with us when we were still far off and brought us home, you can point to somebody else in the crowd. Maybe somebody we know already or used to know. Maybe it's your mum or your dad or your great grand, somebody you went to school with all those years ago and they, but they prayed for you and they prayed for you to come to know Jesus and they never knew perhaps whether or not you did. But I just imagine, imagine seeing the Lord, the Jesus, just turning to that person and saying, open up that journal Show him the places and times where his name appeared in your prayers. Read out that list of those that you asked for, the ones you prayed for regularly and boldly and patiently and faithfully. The Bible says that's the kind of prayer that accomplishes much. And then you look in the book and there's your name in their prayers. Maybe suddenly there's a bunch of us just standing there, open mouth, they're on this person who we kind of knew, who seemed quiet and shy, but then you see the power in them, because this was actually a mighty warrior. And they went against opposition, there was a fight and a struggle and a meeting. Paga! Because they prayed, they interceded. Paga! Powerful, a meeting for, on your behalf, and then that meant a meeting between your sins and his sacrifice, between your name and the only name by which men must be saved. And I'm there, and, and I realise, and so are these five, or ten, or twenty, or fifty, and somehow all of our destinies got linked together in the everlasting mystery of it all. We get to enjoy this joy that never ends, and it all started because somebody began with prayer on behalf of their friend, or their brother, or their grandson, their neighbour. And we all start to laugh with the Lord at the look on the face of the one who prayed. When we say our names and we look on her list and the Lord opens his book and there we all are too. Because somehow part of the reason, and God only knows how much and there's a mystery to it as I say, but because it all begins with prayer, as we partner with him, the wonder just intensifies by the realisation that I'm there in answer to someone's prayers. I know I was once so far away, but now I'm there by grace. I'm in their miracle. I'm in their miracle story. I'm their answered prayer. But as I close, I have to think and ask you too, whose names are in my book that I'm praying for? Family, friends, neighbours, people I know or, or people I knew, but the Lord reminds me of them so I can write them down and pray that every barrier would be broken down, every hurt would be healed, every lie would be replaced by the truth. So his eyes would be opened, so her heart would be ready to meet the one who's already done everything that's needed for them to be saved and whole and free forever and ever, that he would come to know Christ, that she would meet him too and never be the same. Who are we praying for? Let's begin with prayer.
It has been so good to start this series of bless that we know that it all starts and begins with prayer and I wonder for you as you've been listening to Anthony and um, replying to those questions those reflection questions that we were looking at and maybe through the worship that we just had as well who is it that you are going to be committing to pray for or maybe as we've been listening to this, you've been thinking that there is somebody that you could text and say, hey, should we commit to praying with each other? Should we have a little WhatsApp group where we just pray for each other? Or maybe we could meet now and have a walk and a pray together. But please do be thinking about what this actually practically will mean for you this week and in the coming weeks as we're in this series of Bless, knowing that it all begins with prayer. And if you would like to join in the community here more at Ivy, then as I said, we now have four services, um, two at Didsbury and two at Cheadle Hume, 9.30 and 11, which you can join in person for personal services. 
or if being online is the best option for you right now, then we also have many weekly groups that are all happening online still. And so we would love for you to be able to connect with those, whether it's Alpha because you have some questions or it's Grow Group because you want to get to know other people more or it's some of the other groups that we have going on. Please check out the website and also our weekly newsletter. That's the best way to know everything that's going on with church is the newsletter. So if you'd like that, just go on to ivychurch.org slash connect and then everything that you need is on there. Or if you have a particular question or just something more that you've heard today that you'd like to talk to us about, anytime you can just email us on hi at ivychurch.org and someone from the staff team will be able to get in contact with you. So that is the end of our service here and I pray for you today that you would know the depths of God's love for you. That you would know the power that you hold in having Jesus with you every step of every day and that you would start to see opportunities to step out in faith as you begin each day with prayer. And so I bless you and I thank you for joining us today and I'll see you soon. Bye. I was lost with a broken heart you pick me up now and set apart From me I shine born again Forever safe in my Savior's hands You are more than my words can say I follow you Lord, for all my days I fix my eyes following your ways Forever free in an ending grace Cause you are, you are, you are my freedom, we lift you higher, lift you higher, your love, your love, your love, never ending, whoa, oh, oh, you are alive in us, nothing can take your place, you are all we need, your love has set your love be my shining light breaking chains that were holding me you sent your son down to set me free now everything of this world will fail i'm pressing on till i see your face and i will live that your will be done and i won't stop till your kingdom comes cause you are you are you are my freedom, we lift you higher, lift you higher, your love, your love, your love, never ending, whoa, oh, oh, you are alive in us, nothing can take your place, you are all we need, your love has set us free, whoa, Lift you higher, your love.